Welcome to the Canadian edition of The Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. I started watching Andrew. Everything that he said had a witness within my spirit and he made the word come alive. You know, he just helped me connect dots. I have such a passion and a love for the word of God and he deepened that for me. And now here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Today, I'm starting a brand new series entitled, The Word Became Flesh. I've got CDs and DVDs out on this. And let me just introduce this by saying that this is my wife's favorite teaching of mine. Uh, you know, she's always supportive, but she actually complimented me. There's five teachings in here in this series, and she liked every one of them, and that's, that may be a first. So anyway, hopefully this will be a blessing to you. And we're nearing the Christmas season and uh, so I'm going to be talking a lot about the virgin birth of Jesus. But you know, Jesus said this in Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 7, verse 13. He says, Your traditions and doctrines of men make the word of God of none effect. And we have so many traditions around Christmas that I believe have compromised us really understanding some of the greatest truths that there are in the Bible surround the virgin birth. And so I'm going to take a little while to get into it. I'm going to be talking about some other things. Actually, some of the things I'll be talking about could go into a number of different series I've got. I've got one series entitled Killing Sacred Cows, and a teaching that I've got on the sovereignty of God would be included in that. I've got another series on uh, the authority of the believer, and I'm going to be focusing on that a lot, and then a teaching on uh, the importance of the Word of God, a sure foundation. So I'm going to be taking bits and pieces from a number of different things that I teach and uh, directing all of them towards understanding the virgin birth. And most people, honestly, have not given a lot of thought to this. And like I was saying earlier, some of it's because our uh, Christmas traditions have overwhelmed the real message of Jesus coming to this earth. But I tell you, Jesus becoming a man is probably the greatest miracle of all. And I don't know if other people think this way. I'm beginning to think that uh, I may be a little weird, but I, ever since I was a little kid, I always wondered why the Lord waited 4,000 years after the sin of Adam and Eve to come to the earth and redeem mankind. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 8 that what we have is a better covenant that's established upon better promises. So if what we've got now is better, why did it take 4,000 years for the Lord to show up? I mean, the people under the Old Covenant didn't have near the benefits that we have today. Another thing I wondered about, if God is God, why did He choose to become a man and have to live on this earth and suffer crucifixion? I mean, if He's God, couldn't God do anything that He wanted to do? And so I remember as a little kid asking people these questions and nobody in my church can answer those questions. I'm going to be answering some of those things. And once you begin to understand all of the things that led up to Jesus becoming a man and coming to this earth to redeem us, it will make you appreciate so much more what Jesus has done for us because it was no small thing. Let me just start with this verse out of Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, and I'm breaking right into the middle of what he's saying. But he says in verse 4, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law. This says that when the fullness of time, if you look this up in the Greek and study it out, it's talking about that there was an appointed time. There were certain things that had to take place before Jesus could come to this earth and redeem us from our sins and provide the salvation that's available to us today. And again, this goes against a lot of religious teachings, a lot of religious traditions. Uh, you know, people just say things like, well, God is sovereign. God can do anything He wants to. And they take that kind of an attitude and then they apply it towards every single thing that happens and they become fatalistic, believing that whatever happens, it must be God's will. And so they blame God. We even write it in our contracts and say that you're insured barring an act of God. And they blame God for tornadoes and hurricanes and all kinds of things that God has nothing to do with. But people just have this mindset that God is God. He can do anything He wants to. 
LET ME USE ANOTHER PASSAGE OF SCRIPTURE IN EPHESIANS, CHAPTER 3, VERSE 20, AND THIS IS A PRAYER THAT THE APOSTLE PAUL WAS PRAYING FOR THE PEOPLE, AND HE HAD PRAYED THAT THEY COULD UNDERSTAND THE HEIGHT, THE DEPTH, THE LENGTH, AND THE BREADTH OF THE LOVE OF GOD. AND THEN HE SAYS THAT YOU MIGHT KNOW THE uh, LOVE OF GOD WHICH PASSETH KNOWLEDGE, THAT YOU MIGHT BE FILLED WITH ALL THE FULLNESS OF GOD. HOW CAN YOU KNOW SOMETHING IF IT PASSES KNOWLEDGE? WHAT HE'S TALKING ABOUT IS THAT YOU WOULD EXPERIENCE GOD INSTEAD OF JUST AN INTELLECTUAL KNOWLEDGE ABOUT GOD. AND THEN THE NEXT VERSE, VERSE 20 SAYS THAT HE IS ABLE TO DO EXCEEDING ABUNDANTLY ABOVE ALL WE ASK OR THINK ACCORDING TO THE POWER THAT WORKS IN US. YOU WILL HAVE PEOPLE and OFTEN JUST STOP AND LEAVE THE LAST PART OF THAT VERSE OFF AND YOU'LL HEAR PEOPLE SAY, GOD IS SOVEREIGN. GOD CAN DO ANYTHING. GOD CAN DO ANYTHING that you ABOVE ANYTHING YOU ASK OR THINK. THAT'S ACTUALLY AN UNTRUE STATEMENT. IT SAYS HE'S ABLE TO DO EXCEEDING ABUNDANTLY ABOVE ALL WE ASK OR THINK ACCORDING TO THE POWER THAT WORKS IN US. THE WORD ACCORDING TO, IF YOU LOOK IT UP IN THE DICTIONARY, IT MEANS TO THE DEGREE OF OR IN PROPORTION TO THE POWER THAT WORKS IN US. SO I'M GOING TO SAY SOMETHING RIGHT HERE THAT MAY SHOCK SOME PEOPLE, BUT IF YOU'LL STICK WITH ME, I'LL EXPLAIN THIS AND I, IT'LL WIND UP BENEFITING YOU AND HELPING YOU. BUT GOD IS LIMITED IN WHAT HE CAN DO. HE'S NOT LIMITED IN THE SENSE THAT SOMEBODY ELSE LIMITED HIM, BUT HE'S LIMITED HIMSELF. GOD ALMIGHTY HAS SAID, PSALMS CHAPTER 89, VERSE 34, MY COVENANT WILL I NOT BREAK, NOR ALTER THE THING THAT IS GONE FORTH OUT OF MY LIPS. THAT'S SAYING THAT WHEN GOD SAYS SOMETHING, IT'S A COVENANT. IT'S BINDING. IT'S A CONTRACT. HEBREWS CHAPTER 6 SAYS THAT IT'S IMPOSSIBLE FOR GOD TO LIE. SECOND CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 1 SAYS THAT ALL OF THE PROMISES OF GOD ARE YES AND AMEN. THE INTEGRITY OF GOD CAUSES HIM TO uh, NEVER VIOLATE HIS WORD. YOU KNOW, ANOTHER SCRIPTURE THAT JUST REALLY HAS MINISTERED TO ME, AND I COULD GO INTO A LOT OF EXPLANATION. I'M NOT GOING TO TAKE TIME ON TODAY'S PROGRAM, BUT HEBREWS CHAPTER 1, VERSE 3 SAYS THAT JESUS IS THE BRIGHTNESS OF HIS GLORY AND THE EXPRESS IMAGE OF GOD'S PERSON. AND THE EXPRESS IMAGE THERE IS TALKING ABOUT HE IS A PERFECT REPRESENTATION. IT WASN'T A VAGUE REPRESENTATION. HE DIDN'T MODEL GOD FOR US IN SOME WAYS. HE WAS GOD MANIFEST IN THE FLESH, AND IT SAYS THAT HE WAS THE EXPRESS IMAGE OF GOD, AND THEN IT GOES ON TO SAY THAT HE UPHOLDS ALL THINGS BY THE WORD OF HIS POWER. NOW THAT IS REALLY SIGNIFICANT. AGAIN, IF YOU WERE TO STUDY THIS OUT, AND IF I TOOK TIME TO GO INTO ALL OF THESE WORDS IN THE GREEK, IT LITERALLY IS SAYING THAT THE ENTIRE CREATION IS HELD TOGETHER BY THE INTEGRITY OF GOD'S WORD. GOD SPOKE THE WORLD INTO EXISTENCE. GENESIS CHAPTER 1, HE SAID, LET THERE BE LIGHT. HE SAID, LET THE DRY LAND APPEAR. HE SAID, LET THE EARTH BRING FORTH. LET ALL OF THESE THINGS. HE SPOKE EVERYTHING INTO EXISTENCE. EVERYTHING WAS CREATED BY WORDS. SO WORDS ARE THE PARENT FORCE, AND EVERYTHING IN CREATION RESPONDS TO GOD'S WORD. AND, YOU KNOW, I HEARD uh, ORAL ROBERTS ONE TIME. I DON'T HAVE THE uh, ABILITY TO SAY THIS uh, EMPHATICALLY, BUT I HEARD HIM SAY THAT IN ALL OF THE ATOMS, THERE IS ENOUGH NUCLEAR POWER THAT YOU COULD TAKE A SLICE OF WHITE BREAD, JUST A COMMON SLICE OF WHITE BREAD, AND IF YOU COULD SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER SPLIT THOSE ATOMS AND RELEASE THE ENERGY IN THE NUCLEUS OF THOSE ATOMS, THERE'S ENOUGH POWER IN ONE SLICE OF BREAD TO POWER AN OCEAN LINER ACROSS THE OCEAN AND BACK. BUT MAN HAS ONLY BEEN ABLE TO SPLIT UNSTABLE ATOMS LIKE URANIUM, PLUTONIUM, AND THINGS LIKE THAT. BUT IN EVERY ATOM, YOU HAVE THE NUCLEUS, AND THEY ARE LIKELY LIKE CHARGED PARTICLES. ACCORDING TO EVERYTHING WE KNOW, YOU PUT TWO ENDS OF A MAGNET TOGETHER, TWO POSITIVE ENDS, THEY'LL REPEL EACH OTHER. TWO NEGATIVE ENDS, THEY WILL REPEL EACH OTHER. BUT IN THE NUCLEUS OF AN ATOM, YOU'VE GOT THESE LIKE CHARGED par PARTICLES. ACCORDING TO ALL OF THE LAWS, WE UNDERSTAND THE NUCLEUS SHOULD BE EXPLODING and, AND FALLING APART, AND YET THEY'RE HELD TOGETHER SO TIGHTLY THAT THERE'S ONLY A FEW UNSTABLE ELEMENTS THAT WE CAN SPLIT. WHY IS THAT? ACCORDING TO HEBREWS 1-3, IT'S THE WORD OF GOD THAT HOLDS EVERYTHING TOGETHER. SO I CAN SAY IT THIS WAY, THE INTEGRITY OF GOD'S WORD, WHAT HE HAS SAID OUT OF HIS MOUTH, IS WHAT HOLDS ALL OF CREATION TOGETHER. IF GOD WAS TO EVER LIE, IF HE WAS TO EVER BREAK A PROMISE, THEN THE UNIVERSE, YOU AND I, EVERYTHING, 
would self-destruct. He holds all things together by the power of His Word. So the reason I bring that out is to say that people that believe that God just sovereignly controls things and God can do whatever He wants to, they aren't taking into account that when God said something and He said, for instance, you could take James chapter 4, verse 7, where it says, Submit yourselves therefore unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Right there, He limits Himself by saying that because He says, You resist the devil and he will flee from you. If you aren't resisting the devil, if you are yielding to the devil, if you're embracing Satan's ways and his values and stuff, you limit God's ability to intervene because he said you resist the devil. If he just did it for you, he would be violating his own word. The entire universe, creation would fall apart. You know, it's amazing that even a lot of Christians don't have this concept. And again, they have just embraced this thing that God is sovereign. God can do anything He wants to. That is not true. It says, and I believe it's Psalms chapter 15, verse 4, it says, A godly man will swear to his own hurt and change not. The word godly means a person like God. So God swears to his own hurt and changes not. People would sit there and they'll, they'll promise you something and if it turns out that what they've promised is going to be inconvenient for them or hurt them or cause them any grief, they'll just sit there and say, well, I, I'll change my mind or King's X and they change. But God's not like that. Now, see, if you understand the things I'm saying, you may not relate this to the virgin birth of Jesus, but all of these things factor into it because in the fullness of times, Jesus came. If you were to study that out, that means at the first opportune moment, Jesus actually came to this earth. The Lord had been working ever since Adam and Eve transgressed against Him to bring His Son to this planet so that He could become a man, bear our sins, redeem us from the curse that was placed upon us for sinning. And He had been working towards that, but He was limited because when He created Adam and Eve, He gave them authority over the earth. If you were to turn to Psalms 115, verse 16, it says, The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth hath He given to the sons of man. God gave the control, the authority over this earth to man. You can turn back to Genesis chapter 1 and look at this. In Genesis 1, 26 is where God created Adam and Eve. And then He turned around and He says, You have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over everything that creeps upon the earth. That includes the devil because he is a creep. <laughs> Amen. But God gave us absolute control and authority, but by giving it to us, he limited his control over this earth. You know, I actually had a car one time that was given to me. It was the nicest car we had ever had at that time, but I had a guy working for me who really needed a car, and I wound up giving him my car. And it was a very nice car. I mean, it was is really nice. It's the nicest car we'd ever had. And I gave it to him, and he was struggling financially. And after a, a brief period of time, a couple of months, he came to me, and he, he was kind of apologetic, and he says, would you mind if we sold this car and got something that was less than this and used the money uh, to help them? And I told him, I said, it's your car. You can do with it whatever you want to. And he says, but yeah, you gave it to me, and I just wanted to make sure you were okay with it. And I said, look, it's not my car. When I gave it to you, I gave it to you. I put the title in your name. If you want to park the thing outside and, and you know, give people $5 to use a sledgehammer on it and, and make money that way, you can do anything you want to with it. It's yours. And see, a lot of people don't understand that God, when He gave control of this earth, to Adam and Eve. He never intended for them to turn around and yield that control over to Satan and give Satan control over this earth and over people. That wasn't God's plan. There's many, many scriptures I could bring to show you that that's not what God created us for. But God loved us so much and He gave us dominion. Again, if you study these words out, in the Hebrew language over there in Genesis chapter 1, it means absolute control. 
THE EARTH WAS MANKIND'S TO DO WITH AS THEY CHOSE TO DO. GOD DIDN'T PUT ANY RESTRICTIONS. HE DIDN'T SAY, I GIVE YOU DOMINION AS LONG AS YOU OBEY WHAT I WANT YOU TO DO. THERE WAS NO CONDITIONS ON THIS. THERE WAS NO FINE PRINT IN THE CONTRACT. AND REMEMBER THAT GOD UPHOLDS EVERYTHING BY THE POWER IN HIS WORD, THE INTEGRITY of OF HIS WORD. HE CAN'T LIE. WHEN HE SAYS SOMETHING OUT OF HIS MOUTH, IT'S A CONTRACT. AND SO BY GIVING US THIS MUCH POWER AND DOMINION AND AUTHORITY TO RUN OUR LIFE AND TO HAVE DOMINION OVER THIS EARTH, HE SAYS YOU CAN CONTROL THE FISH OF THE SEA, THE FOWL OF THE AIR, AND THE ANIMALS THAT ARE UPON THIS EARTH, EVERYTHING. HE GAVE IT TO US. BY GIVING THAT TO US, GOD LIMITED HIS ABILITY TO RUN AND CONTROL THE EARTH. AGAIN, I GO BACK TO THAT SCRIPTURE I'VE ALREADY QUOTED OUT OF PSALMS 115, VERSE 16, AND IT SAYS, THE HEAVEN, EVEN THE HEAVENS ARE THE LORD'S, BUT THE EARTH HATH HE GIVEN TO THE SONS OF MAN. NOW, SOME PEOPLE MAY COMPARE THAT WITH WHERE IT SAYS, THE EARTH IS THE LORD'S AND THE FULLNESS THEREOF, AND ALL THOSE WHO DWELL THEREIN. AND THEY SAY, ARE THOSE CONTRADICTORY? NO, THE EARTH BELONGS TO THE LORD, HE'S THE ONE THAT CREATED IT, AND SO THEREFORE AS CREATOR, HE IS THE OWNER, BUT HE GAVE THE DOMINION, THE RULERSHIP, THE CONTROL OF IT OVER TO US. IT WOULD BE LIKE IF I OWNED AN APARTMENT COMPLEX OR SOMETHING, AND IF I WAS THE ONE WHO BUILT IT AND I OWNED IT, BUT IF I MADE YOU THE MANAGER, AND IF I SAID YOU CAN DO WITH IT WHATEVER YOU WANT TO, I AM NOT GOING TO INTERVENE. IT IS YOURS. NOW, HERE'S WHAT I WOULD LIKE YOU TO DO, BUT IF I GAVE YOU THAT MUCH AUTHORITY, IF YOU CHOSE NOT TO RUN THINGS THE WAY THAT I WANTED TO, AS OWNER, I GUESS I COULD COME AND TAKE THE THING BACK AND DESTROY THE THING, BUT I CAN'T INTERVENE IN YOUR AFFAIRS IF I SAID YOU RUN IT HOWEVER YOU WANT TO. IF I WAS GOING TO HOLD TO MY WORD, I HAD TO HONOR WHAT I SAID. AND THIS IS THE WAY IT WAS WITH GOD. GOD NEVER INTENDED FOR US TO DESTROY THIS EARTH AND DESTROY OUR OWN LIVES AND ALL OF THE MURDER AND THE RAPE AND THE PLUNDER. THIS IS NEVER GOD'S WILL. THIS IS NOT WHAT HE INTENDED. BUT HE CREATED US AND GAVE US SUCH DOMINION AND AUTHORITY THAT EVEN THOUGH THINGS WENT CONTRARY TO WHAT HE SAID, HE DIDN'T JUST COME IN AND INTERVENE AND CHANGE THE RULES AND TAKE HIS CONTRACT BACK AND VIOLATE HIS WORD. THE ENTIRE UNIVERSE WOULD HAVE SELF-DESTRUCT. He was, HE WAS BOUND BY HIS OWN INTEGRITY. BOY, th- THESE ARE POWERFUL TRUTHS, AND I'M ULTIMATELY WORKING TOWARDS TALKING ABOUT THE VIRGIN BIRTH, BUT IF YOU DON'T UNDERSTAND THIS, AGAIN, YOU'LL JUST THINK, WHY DID GOD WAIT 4,000 YEARS? HE COULD HAVE COME AT ANY TIME HE WANTED TO. IT'S NOT TRUE. I'M GOING TO EXPLAIN THAT IN A LOT MORE DETAIL. AND ALSO, YOU COULD HAVE SAID, WELL, WHY DIDN'T HE COME UP WITH A DIFFERENT WAY OF REDEEMING MANKIND AND SOLVING THE PROBLEMS? IF YOU UNDERSTAND WHAT I'M SAYING, HE WAS BOUND BY HIS OWN INTEGRITY. HE COULDN'T COME DOWN HERE AND CHANGE THE RULES AND JUST OVERRIDE OUR OWN FREE WILL. AND SO GOD HIMSELF HAD TO BECOME A MAN BECAUSE HE GAVE AUTHORITY OVER THIS EARTH TO PHYSICAL HUMAN BEINGS. AND JOHN CHAPTER 4, VERSE 24 SAYS THAT GOD IS A SPIRIT, AND THOSE WHO WORSHIP HIM MUST WORSHIP HIM IN SPIRIT AND IN TRUTH. GOD ISN'T A PHYSICAL BEING. HE CREATED PHYSICAL HUMAN BEINGS, BUT HE HIMSELF IS A SPIRIT, AND HE GAVE AUTHORITY OVER THIS PHYSICAL PLANET TO PEOPLE WITH PHYSICAL BODIES. SINCE GOD DIDN'T HAVE A PHYSICAL BODY, HE HONESTLY WOULD HAVE VIOLATED HIS OWN INSTRUCTIONS, HIS OWN INTEGRITY, IF HE WOULD HAVE COME DOWN HERE AND HAVE JUST WIPED OUT SATAN, DEALT WITH ALL OF THE EVIL, FIXED THINGS AND MADE THINGS WORK. HE WOULD HAVE VIOLATED HIS OWN WORD BECAUSE HE DIDN'T HAVE A PHYSICAL BODY. SO THIS IS WHY JESUS HAD TO BECOME A MAN. LET ME TURN OVER AND READ THIS VERSE TO YOU. I'M NOT SURE I CAN QUOTE THIS ONE EXACTLY. I DON'T USE THIS QUITE AS MUCH, BUT IN uh, JOHN CHAPTER 5, JESUS WAS TALKING ABOUT uh, HIS AUTHORITY THAT HE HAD FROM THE FATHER. AND IN VERSE 25, HE SAYS, VERILY, VERILY, I SAY UNTO YOU, THE HOUR IS COMING, AND NOW IS, WHEN THE DEAD SHALL HEAR THE VOICE OF THE SON OF GOD, AND THEY THAT HEAR SHALL LIVE. FOR AS THE FATHER HATH LIFE IN HIMSELF, SO HATH HE GIVEN TO THE SON TO HAVE LIFE IN HIMSELF, AND HATH GIVEN HIM AUTHORITY TO EXECUTE JUDGMENT ALSO BECAUSE HE IS THE SON OF MAN. NOW, AGAIN, MOST PEOPLE JUST READ OVER THESE THINGS AND DON'T THINK ABOUT IT. I TELL YOU, IF YOU WOULD USE YOUR BRAIN FOR SOMETHING BESIDES A HAT RACK, IT'S AMAZING WHAT YOU WOULD COME UP WITH. BUT THINK OF THIS. HE SAYS, THIS IS THE REASON GOD THE FATHER 
GAVE JESUS AUTHORITY TO EXECUTE JUDGMENT IN ORDER, YOU, you COULD SAY, IN ORDER TO in, uh, INTERVENE IN THE AFFAIRS OF MAN AND TO HAVE CONTROL AND TO DEAL WITH THINGS, THE REASON HE WAS GIVEN THIS AUTHORITY IS BECAUSE HE WAS THE SON OF MAN. AND I'M NOT GOING TO TAKE TIME TO GO THROUGH, BUT YOU COULD STUDY THIS OUT. IT'S CONSISTENT IN THE GOSPELS THAT WHEN JESUS IS CALLED THE SON OF GOD, IT'S REFERRING TO HIS DIVINITY. IT SAYS OVER IN 1 TIMOTHY CHAPTER 3, VERSE 16, THAT GOD WAS MANIFEST IN THE FLESH. JESUS WAS GOD IN THE FLESH. SO WHEN IT CALLS HIM THE SON OF GOD, THAT'S REFERRING TO HIS DIVINITY. THE ANGELS AT THE BIRTH OF JESUS SAID, COME SEE CHRIST THE LORD. THAT WORD FOR LORD IS THE EXACT WORD THAT'S USED FOR GOD ALL THROUGHOUT THE NEW TESTAMENT. JESUS WAS GOD AT BIRTH. HE DIDN'T GROW INTO BECOMING GOD. HE WAS GOD. SO WHEN IT REFERS TO JESUS AS BEING THE SON OF GOD, THAT'S TALKING ABOUT HIS DIVINITY. BUT WHEN IT REFERS TO JESUS AS THE SON OF MAN, THAT IS REFERRING TO HIS PHYSICAL BODY. AND LUKE 2.52 SAYS JESUS HAD TO GROW IN WISDOM AND IN STATURE AND IN FAVOR WITH GOD AND MAN. HIS PHYSICAL BODY GREW. HE DIDN'T COME OUT OF THE WOMB SPEAKING HEBREW. HE HAD TO LEARN TO TALK. HE HAD TO LEARN TO WALK. HIS PHYSICAL BODY HAD TO GROW, BUT IN THE SPIRIT, HE WAS CHRIST THE LORD AT BIRTH. SO WHEN IT REFERS TO THE REASON HE HAS AUTHORITY IS BECAUSE HE WAS THE SON OF MAN. HE'S SAYING IT'S BECAUSE OF THIS PHYSICAL BODY THAT HE NOW HAD AUTHORITY. I'VE GOT SO MUCH MORE TO SHARE ABOUT THIS. I'M RUNNING SHORT OF TIME TODAY, BUT I TELL YOU, IF YOU CAN PIECE THESE THINGS TOGETHER, AND I'm, I'M GOING TO BE TALKING ABOUT THIS, IT WILL HELP YOU TO UNDERSTAND WHY THE LORD WAITED 4,000 YEARS. HE CAME AT THE FIRST OPPORTUNE MOMENT, THE FIRST TIME THAT HE COULD. AND AGAIN, I KNOW THAT THAT RUBS SOME PEOPLE'S RELIGIOUS THINKING THE WRONG, BECAUSE GOD CAN DO ANYTHING. NO, HE CAN'T LIE. HE CAN'T VIOLATE HIS WORD. HE CANNOT JUST INTERVENE AND, and WIPE THINGS OUT THAT HE HAD PROMISED MANKIND. SO HE CAME AT THE FIRST OPPORTUNE TIME, AND IT WAS NECESSARY THAT JESUS HAD TO BECOME A MAN SO THAT HE COULD HAVE AUTHORITY IN THIS EARTH. HE HAD GIVEN AUTHORITY TO PHYSICAL HUMAN BEINGS, AND GOD IS A SPIRIT, AND THOSE WHO WORSHIP HIM MUST WORSHIP HIM IN SPIRIT AND IN TRUTH, JOHN 4, 24. SO GOD HAD TO BECOME A MAN. I TELL YOU, I, ans I ASKED THESE QUESTIONS FOR DECADES BEFORE I GOT ANSWERS STUDYING THE WORD OF GOD, AND IT HAS JUST BLESSED ME SO MUCH. AND IN THIS SERIES, AS WE GO THROUGH THIS, I WON'T GET TO THIS PROBABLY THIS WEEK, BUT MAYBE NEXT WEEK OR THE WEEK AFTER. THIS WILL ALSO NOT ONLY EXPLAIN TO YOU THE VIRGIN BIRTH, WHY IT WAS NECESSARY, HOW IT HAPPENED, BUT IT WILL ALSO SHARE WITH YOU ABOUT HOW YOU CAN CONCEIVE A MIRACLE. IF GOD HIMSELF WAS LIMITED BECAUSE OF HIS OWN INTEGRITY, BECAUSE HE WOULDN'T VIOLATE HIS WORD, AND IF GOD HAD TO CONFORM TO THE LAWS THAT HE CREATED, WELL, THEN HOW IN THE WORLD ARE YOU EXPECTING TO RECEIVE A MIRACLE FROM GOD IF YOU IGNORE ALL OF THE LAWS OF GOD? THERE ARE REASONS WHY SOME PEOPLE SEE THE POWER OF GOD MANIFEST THROUGH THEM AND REASONS WHY OTHER PEOPLE DON'T. AND THAT'S WHAT THIS SERIES WILL HELP YOU. IT'S TALKING ABOUT THE WORD BECAME FLESH. I HAVE CD'S ON THIS, AND THEN I HAVE DVD'S THAT WERE TAKEN FROM MY TELEVISION PROGRAM, AND THEN OTHER DVD'S THAT WERE TAKEN FROM A LIVE uh, MEETING THAT I DID. SO WE'VE GOT THREE DIFFERENT ALBUMS HERE. IF YOU'LL LISTEN, OUR ANNOUNCER WILL GIVE YOU ALL THE INFORMATION ABOUT HOW YOU CAN RECEIVE THESE PRODUCTS, AND I PROMISE YOU THIS WOULD BE A BLESSING. I ENCOURAGE YOU TO GET IT. SO LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER, AND THEN PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY TO RECEIVE THESE MATERIALS. God's promises will become more real and alive when you get Andrew's complete teaching titled, The Word Became Flesh. Andrew's complete teaching, The Word Became Flesh, is available as a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast or in a DVD album recorded live at a ministry event. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $135. Go to our website at awmc.ca and click on Today's TV Offer under the Store tab to see all the ways you can get these products. 
or you can call the Andrew Womack Ministries Canada Helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647-348-2220 to order. I want to let all of you know who are watching our program in Canada that we have a Canadian office. We also have a website, awmc.ca, and you can go there and you can get all of our materials sent to you from our Canadian office. You can become a partner with us and give, and the money will stay right there to help us reach people in Canada. We would love to help you and minister to you any way we can. To learn more about the vision and mission of Andrew Womack Ministries Canada, be sure to visit our website at awmc.ca. While there, you'll also find details about all of the products available and be able to access many of Andrew's teachings absolutely free. Thank you for your support, and we look forward to hearing from you today. created with a purpose, written in the heart of God long before you were born. He is calling you to find it. You were born for such a time as this, to be a disciple, to leave this world behind and follow Him designed for a destiny, one that only you can fulfill. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. We want to help you to know God experience His unconditional love, to be equipped and empowered to become a world changer. Gosh, it's just so good to be part of Andrew's ministry. And you're part of everything that he is doing. You're a part of Karis Bible College. You're a part of the things he's doing in Uganda and other countries. We feel that every time someone graduates, every time someone receives the baptism of the Holy Spirit, every time someone receives salvation, we had a hand in that because we are partners with Andrew Womack Ministries. I'd like to ask you to pray about becoming a partner with us. You know, our ministry is based in the United States, but we have 16 offices around the world. We've got all together around 70 Bible schools scattered around the world. And we actually reach more people outside of the U.S. than we do in the U.S. And we need partners to enable us to do that. And so I'd like to encourage you to join with us. There are great benefits to you being a partner, not only in eternity, but here in this life. So if you are looking for a good return on your investment, I believe that this is a good ministry. It'll touch you right where you are. So join with us and become a partner with us today. Did you know Andrew Womack Ministries is on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest? We pray that we can bless you with the Word of God wherever you are in the world on any of these platforms. Follow Andrew on social media today.